Hello everybody, welcome to my quarantined kitchen. <laughs> um, I'm going to be showing you two different recipes today. Um, the first one is just a basic smoothie. If you watched my going green movie video that I put on uh, last week, you would know that I'm currently doing um, green smoothies. I drink a smoothie every day, cut it into two portions actually, and then one healthy meal every day. So today, throughout the day, I'm going to be showing you what my quarantine kitchen looks like. So I'm actually going to show you a little bit of meal prep for smoothies. So I make my smoothies in advance because I buy my, I only go to the grocery store once a week and I'll buy all of my greens, all of my fruits, all at one time. Now what happens if I don't prep it is those greens will go wilted and they'll go moldy and it's really gross. Um, so in a way to minimize waste, I freeze a lot of my fruits and vegetables. And for smoothies, I make them into their own little pre-portioned bag so that in the morning I just pull out a bag and start it. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips that I do to make my smoothies today. And we will be making, I have two different smoothies to make and I have two different green app. Don't mind the hair tie. Um, I did an experiment with my students online today about good words and bad words. So they're actually cut in half, but they're stuck together at the moment. <laughs> so we're going to, um, I'm going to make two different smoothie recipes today. Uh, one is going to be blueberry apple and the other, I think I may do a raspberry apple today as well to use up the apples. So I'm just going to show you kind of how I prep my greens ahead of time so that they have the right texture and you don't have that. There's a mushy kind of, uh, if you freeze the greens whole, that's what I'm trying to explain. If you freeze the greens whole, they get wilted when they're frozen because it's a water, it's a high water content vegetable and they don't blend very well after they've been frozen. You get a lot of the stems and you get a lot of the fibers and it doesn't do very well for me. Fresh greens blend the best, but I can't keep my greens fresh because it takes me too long to get to them. So what I started doing was blending the greens fresh into a green juice, which I'm going to show you, and then I freeze them into like little ice cubes. So it's already blended. It's kind of like a green juice that you then put into your smoothie. So I'm going to show you what that looks like, how to make it, and the ice cube trays that I use, and then we'll make the smoothie ingredients. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I prep my greens to meal prep for my smoothies. So I don't know exactly how many greens I have in here. I think it's about one portion. So this is from bagged lettuce that I bought at the store because head lettuce has a tendency to still have bugs on it here in Brazil. And that's kind of gross. So this has been washed multiple times um, by me, not just by the factory. I don't, re I don't rely on anybody else's. Fun fact, when keeping your greens in the fridge and you want them to last longer, put them in a paper towel. So these have already been cleaned. They've already been washed. So I'm just going to put pretty much, I think I'm going to put the entire thing into the blender. When it reaches like here loosely, it's not densely packed, but when it reaches like here between three and four cups, that's what you're aiming for. Loosely packed, it'll fill up most of the blender. Yeah, this is going to be about one portion, which is fine. That's all we need. I have other portions currently freezing at the moment, so. I do wash all of my plastic bags. Okay, so this is the amount of greens that I'm going to use. This is going to be for one portion of smoothies, and then... It's filled up to about here of water. It's a little over half a cup of water, and I'm going to end that to, to the blender. Then I'm going to blend this, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done, until it's a, like a, a juicy consistency. It's going to be a juice that is a very dark green, almost purple, because of the type of lettuce that I'm using. So I'm going to blend that off camera. And I will show you what that looks like before I put it into the ice cube tray. So this is what it looks like when you're finished blending. All of that lettuce compressed with a little bit of water came down to about a cup, a little more than that, 
worth of green juice. Um, you didn't lose any fiber, it just broke it down and it made it really watery. So now I'm going to pour this into my ice cube tray that has been cleaned and sterilized and all that fun stuff. And then I'm going to freeze it so that the green is already frozen, it's, it was made from fresh, it doesn't have that, that texture. This is for me to avoid the smoothie texture that we all know that I hate. So, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing. We're going to fill up the ice cube tray. Most glamorous thing I've ever done on video, I'm sure. Such a beautiful color, isn't it? Not really. I'm kidding. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, there's... Usually fills up and overflows a little bit, but that's okay. So then I'm going to even out the cubes in the tray without making a huge mess. Do, do, do. I'm tilting it so it just becomes a little more even, but this is difficult to do without spilling out the top where it's overflowing. That's okay. It's about as good as, look at me, good job. It's about as good as it's gonna get. Um, and then I'm just gonna take this and put this into the freezer. Because of how shallow my ice cube trays are, it takes about two hours to freeze. And then after that, I can put the entire portion of greens into the bag for the smoothies, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, and yeah, that's how I prep my greens for my green smoothies that I drink every day. And so I'll do this at night before I go to bed, because um, I have about a week's worth of smoothies already prepped. So, but I went to the grocery store and I buy them anyway, freeze them, and then they can stay in the freezer for up to three months. So, you know, I, I will drink them in that amount of time. So anyway, this is going to go in the freezer and then I'll show you how to put together your smoothie. So this is what the greens look like after they have been frozen. So then I'm going to put this into a plastic bag, which I'll do on camera. And then on top of those, I'm going to put in... Uh, the fruits that I plan to freeze for the smoothie. So this this is the frozen cubes of spring greens. So um, yes, I don't have anything else to say on that. <laughs> so I'm going to take this and put it into a bag and I'll show you that on camera. Okay, so I'm going to show you kind of my layout for making the smoothies. So we have our frozen greens. This is one portion of greens. So the entire thing is going to go into the bottom of that bag. Then I'm going to make two different smoothies today. The first one is going to be a green apple strawberry. And then I'm also going to make a green apple blueberry because I need to use up my apples. The proportion of fruit to greens in my smoothies is normally I would use two types of fresh fruit and then one of these. This is a juice concentrate that's very, very popular here in Brazil. Um, and if I were in the States and produce was a little cheaper, I would put three fresh fruits and the, or a larger portion of the two fruits and then my portion of greens. So the first one we're going to make is the strawberry apple. And I'm going to take the greens and put them in here just because it's easier to put them into the bag. So, very glamorous here. Do, 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 do. Now, after you do this, as you can see, my ice tray is uh, definitely stained. I would highly recommend washing with an actual scrub brush to get all those remnants out of there. I also like to bleach it so that in case you miss something, it doesn't create a moldy flavor in the greens. Um, but that's just me. That's totally up to you. So then I'm go make sure you wash all of your produce and make sure you wash your hands before doing this. My apple is very bruised because I did the mean words, nice words activity with my kids. Uh, if you don't know what that is, you take two identical apples and you, one of them before you show it to the students, you bruise up the apple um, by hitting it on the floor or on the counter or whatever. And then um, your second apple you leave alone. So what you're doing is then you're going to show the kids the two apples. And then one apple you're going to see, speak, blah, 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 speak very nice words to by saying, Oh, you're wonderful. I like you. I want you to be my friend. 
blah, blah, blah. And then you cut open that apple and show them how beautiful that apple is. Then you pull out this apple that looks like it's identical, but really you've already bruised it. And you have them say not nice words to this apple. You're ugly, I hate you, you're not my friend, whatever. And then you cut open this apple and you show them what it does to the inside of a person when you say not nice words. Um, and I don't believe in wasting fruit. And as fruit breaks down in the freezer, <laughs> anyway, we're gonna use the bruised apple. <laughs> Normally, I don't recommend using bruised fruit because it grosses me out. Um, I do recommend using as perfectly ripe as possible. Sometimes a little overripe is even better uh, because then you can get all the sugars from that fruit into your smoothie. So in this bag, I have the cubes that you saw me put in. I now have my apple. I'm going to add in 10 frozen strawberries. Why am I using, I'm sorry, I'm just sitting here and just watching me put strawberries into a bowl. Why am I using 10 strawberries and not 11, not 12, not six? Um, the answer is because 10 is a nice round even number and it's easier to portion control and count your calories for the smoothie. So that's why I do that, okay? And then now I'm going to, I need to run this under some water to loosen it up. Um, and then I'm going to put this into the bag as well. Love the sound of water running while you're staring at a screen in my kitchen. Cut open the package. And then that goes in there. And then that's it. That is my smoothie. That is the... I would then take this out of the freezer. I would put it into the blender and I would mix in two tablespoons of flaxseed for extra protein and fiber. And then um, I would also add in a, about a cup of water, a half cup to a cup, depending on how it's blending. And there you go. That's one complete portion. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to repeat that entire process, but instead of strawberries and the suco de marango, the strawberry pulp, now I'm going to do a blueberry green apple tangerine smoothie. So same thing, Ooh, all over my counter. My counter is clean. I bleach it on a regular basis. I wash it on a regular basis and my housekeeper came yesterday. So there's that. I do wash and reuse my plastic bags, so for anyone who wants to come for me about using plastic, um, my plastic bags, my Ziploc bags, especially the freezer kind, have a very, very long shelf life. Um, so, because they're amazing. Let me wipe that off really quick. So, don't yell at me about that. If I had better a jar would work just as well, but that takes up an awkward amount of space in the freezer. <laughs> so um, I use Ziploc bags. Feel free to come for me, go ahead. But like I said, you could use a Tupperware, you could use, they have some really cool thicker plastic bags that people are using now. Not sure how that solves the problem, but I, I wash and reuse my Ziploc bags because I like to save the planet. So, cutting up a full green apple, the entire portion of greens. This is the spring green mix. I also use kale. Spinach is a really nice one to use as well because it's a very neutral flavor. As learned in my green smoothie video, make sure you use kale and not watercress. You will regret it if you do not. However, in the U.S., it's much easier to come across spinach. I said kale. I meant spinach instead of watercress because they look very similar. Okay, so there's the green apples. Then I'm going to open up my bag of blueberries. Um, you could use a measuring cup for this. I do not because 
I don't actually have one. Um, so we're going to kind of eyeball this. That's about three quarters of a cup, I bet. Something like that. If not, it's closer to a cup. But So then I have my greens, my apples, my blueberries, and then I'm going to put the suco de tangerina on top. So this is not necessarily, I don't want to call this a concentrate because a concentrate is usually all sugar. And this is actually when they juice the fruit, they then put this in the blender with water, I think. Um, because the calories in this don't equate the calories to a concentrate at all. However, I'm not 100% confident on that. No one has been able to give me an answer on what the supers actually are, what the pulp is actually are. So... Squeeze out the air for that. Make it so it lays flat, and then that goes on the bottom of my stack of smoothies. And there you go. That is how I meal prep my smoothies. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the second recipe of today. This is a fantastic dinner option. Uh, it's, it's a classic. We're going to make buffalo cauliflower wings. That sounded really enthusiastic. Buffalo cauliflower wings, and I'm also going to use some frozen potatoes to make some french fries. This is a fantastic option if you are vegan, um, vegetarian, or if you're just trying to spice it up a little bit, huh? <laughs> and use kind of a healthier option than fried chicken wings. So we're going to bake this recipe, and I'm going to walk you through how to actually make the batter, um, to put the cauliflower in, etc., etc. So let me show you what I've got going on, and I'll show you how to work through uh, our activity for today. Okay, so on my table here, you, I have what we're going to use. We have a sheet pan bowl that we're going to use for baking the cauliflower. I'll put that over here for now. Our mixing bowl, we're going to use garlic a little bit of hot sauce, about a half cup of flour, and we're gonna use milk of your choice. I'm using uh, soy milk. So, and you're also going to need, mine was frozen, but you're going to need about a half head of cauliflower. So the first thing we're gonna do is mix all of the ingredients together. So my half cup of flour, I'm using bola de fuba because I am gluten free, so I can't use regular flour. This is a, almost like corn meal would be the best way to describe it. It's gonna have a slightly different texture, but still, um, still what I'm gonna use. So, and then we need about a half cup of whole milk or milk of your choice. Again, I don't actually own a measuring cup, but I've been cooking long enough that I have a relatively good idea of what that looks like. Forgot to get my teaspoon out. <laughs> Check out the pajama, the pajama bottoms, the green skulls actually glow in the dark. It's super cool. Quarantine kitchen, man, that means we're cooking in our pajamas. All right, we're gonna use a teaspoon of garlic. I'm going to use a little more than a teaspoon because I happen to like the flavor of garlic. And then to finish off the batter, we're going to use about a teaspoon of hot sauce. We're going to use the rest of this hot sauce to make the actual buffalo sauce in a little bit. Uh, this is just to help bind the batter and give it a little bit of flavor. I'm probably going to have to add more milk. You can also stir with an actual spoon like a normal human too. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, because of the flour that I'm using, I'm going to have to add a little bit more milk, which is fine. Adjust the recipe as necessary, obviously. Okay, now I'm going to add my cauliflower into the bowl.
and we're going to try to coat the cauliflower evenly. Now, for your pan, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, for your pan, mine is a nonstick pan, so I'm not going to add anything to it except for a little oil over the top of the cauliflower. Um, if you don't have a pan that's nonstick, then I would recommend uh, coating it with parchment paper um, or using a nonstick spray so that the cauliflower doesn't stick. Just make sure we coat that really good. And then I'm going to put the coated cauliflower onto my sheet pan. It's better if it needs to, yeah, I'm going to add more milk because it's kind of chunky. And I don't really want chunky. Nobody wants that. <laughs> there we go. That looks better. Okay. Now I'm going to put that into the pan. I'm going to try to leave out the batter because it didn't. Do -do -do. I could move this closer so that you can see what I'm doing. That would be fun. And what the batter is going to do is give it kind of a texture for the buffalo sauce to hold on to, in case you're wondering. You're like, why am I putting flour on top of this? It's going to help give it a nice coating, and then it's also going to give the buffalo sauce something to hold on to. I have a little excess batter, and that's perfectly fine. So now I'm going to top this with some olive oil. And now I'm going to bake it for about 20 minutes in the oven. Um, not on high. Uh, about Well, no, it is on high, actually. I'm sorry, about 230 degrees Celsius. Mine goes up to 280. So for me, that's not high. I bake everything at the highest temperature because my oven is horrid. Um, but we're going to bake that for about 20 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees Celsius for about 20 minutes. And then when we come back and we're ready to apply it, I'll show you how to make the buffalo sauce. Okay, so my cauliflower has been baking for about 10 minutes. So now I'm going to get my french fries started. Now I'm going to show you a whole bunch of extra steps that you do not have to use. You may not want to. That's perfectly fine. This is how I do it. And since this is my show, you watch how I do it. Big old bag of frozen french fries. Um, and believe it or not, these are actually the kind you're supposed to deep fry. However, I don't like being told what to do. So I actually bake mine very successfully, and baking it, in my opinion, really doesn't make a difference. So I'm going to bake mine. So I'm going to pull out my frozen french fries. Now, we're about to get to the extra steps that if you don't want to do them, you don't have to do them, totally up to you. Um, so, just plain old frozen french fries, single layer on a baking tray. Now, I'm going to put some salt and hot water into a bowl. Why am I doing that? Because I like salt on my french fries, but I don't actually own finely ground salt. I only have large salt crystals. And so I'm going to melt them. Melt, dissolve. The word is dissolve. I'm going to dissolve them into hot water, warm water, hot water, and I'm going to put that onto my french fries, and to me, that gives it the right amount of salt. Now, some people will prefer when they come out of the oven or to coat them in oil, um, but that doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. I don't like. I don't like having like all the crystals and all the salt in one part of the pan, and then when I'm trying to eat them, you like, where's the salt? And you can't taste it. So, this is what I do. You don't have to do this. You can just watch me be a total lunatic, and that's perfectly fine. I'm probably gonna get red by like any kind of professional chef out there, but 
whatever. It's actually a bartender's trick, believe it or not, to use saline water instead or salt water instead of um, crystals. When they make drinks that call for like a pinch of salt or whatever, they'll use drips of salt water instead of salt crystals so that your drink is still liquid. What does that have to do with french fries? I have no idea, but you know, I like trivia. So, and also by doing this, it's going to give my seasonings a chance to soak into the french fries as well. Now, you do not have to season your french fries. If you like plain potatoes, hey, hashtag no judgment. I like, I love actually seasoned fries. Now, I also bake my french fries on a high temperature. So right now, if you're worried about the water making the french fries soggy, it will evaporate. And they're frozen, so there's already water to evaporate. Do, 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 do. Make sure I get it all over the place. You can also put it in a bowl and mix it in that way, but I don't, know. I don't feel like doing that today because I'm also about to put seasonings on and then don't ask questions. Just do what I do or don't do what I do. Whatever makes you happy. Do, 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 do. So there you go. There's the salt water in my French fries. And now you could use any seasoning that you would like to use on your fries. You can use le lemon pepper is very common. I'm going to use uh, spicy paprika because I like the smoky little bit of spice that it gives to the fries. So I'm going to go ahead and season that. Why don't I put this in water? Because it doesn't dissolve. <laughs> That's the answer to the question. And then I am going to stir the french fries here in just a minute to coat it in that salt water. And then I'm going to put some more seasoning on the other side. Cover my hands in paprika and I need to pull out my spatula. As I'm cooking at home, nobody cares. In the kitchen, I would wash my hands. But I'm at home, so nobody cares. No! I almost lost it. I love french fries. French fries are like one of my favorite foods. <laughs> so because of baking times, that's why I'm starting this 10 minutes into the cauliflower baking, because the cauliflower takes 30 minutes to bake all together. And then this takes about 20 minutes. So I'm going to put this in in just a moment. I actually don't think I need any more paprika, but I'm going to put some on anyway. Again, make sure you have a flat layer, otherwise they won't cook evenly, and then you'll have some soggy french fries and some not soggy french fries, and nobody wants that. Okay. So now I'm going to move this to the oven to bake along with the cauliflower for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm going to bring out the cauliflower, put the buffalo sauce on, and bake that for another 10 minutes. We have about five more minutes before the cauliflower is ready to come out. So we're going to start making the buffalo sauce. This is a really simple recipe that I use anytime I want buffalo sauce. You need margarine or butter. I have to use a sunflower, a sunflower margarine because I'm allergic to milk. But um, if you want, the best flavor is with natural butter, that I know. But if you have margarine or plant-based margarine or whatever, that will work too. So <laughs> I'm going to scoop about a quarter of a cup because I'm only making one portion. Feel free to double all of these recipes or triple them or whatever, depending on how much you're making. If, if you're making for a family of three, obviously the portions that I'm using aren't gonna work for you. This is for one person and I'm probably gonna have leftovers. And I may end up needing more margarine than that. So, margarine. I'm going to use the, the rest of this bottle. So it's gonna come out to about a quarter of a cup, maybe, no, quarter of a cup. It's only 150 ml and 250 ml is a cup. So I'm going to put all of this into the container, into the pan container. Do, 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 do. And for me, I'm going to reuse that somehow. 
uh, for me, I happen to like spicy, smoky, full of flavor. So that spicy paprika that I mentioned in the last segment, we're going we're gonna to be adding that in as well. Just because I like the, I really like the flavor. It's one of my favorite seasonings. So, in these quarantine kitchen episodes, you'll probably see it a lot, just because it is such a delicious flavor. And the awesome store next to me sells it in wholesale. Okay, that's literally that's it. That's the three ingredients. You're welcome. Some people like to add garlic, which I may or may not do. Probably not though, because there is garlic in the batter. Um, but you can add garlic. You can add lemon pepper, you can skip the hot sauce entirely and just make an oil-based sauce. You can add butter and milk and make a garlic parmesan sauce. This is just, wing sauces are not complicated. That's why they're so popular. Um, but yeah, three ingredients, paprika, hot sauce, and margarine. I'm going to melt this on the stove and I'll be back in a second. Um, it's not gonna change consistency. Literally, I'm just melting the ingredients together. Uh, it'll take maybe about three minutes, just enough time for the cauliflower to come out of the oven. This is the finished melted buffalo sauce. Like I said, I literally just melted the margarine. So now I'm going to pull out the cauliflower and we're going to put that on top, stir it around, put the cauliflower back in the oven for about 10 more minutes. And that's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, also, if you wanted to make your french fries, cheese fries or chili fries, now would be the time to add those top ingredients to the fries so that they can melt and cook and be ready. I wish I had a hot pad, and I do not. Use a hot pad for this. Be careful. This is hot. Perfect. Then I'm going to take my spoon that's been hiding over there and make sure that all the cauliflower gets a really good coating. You should be able to see that batter nice and crispy. Um, it smells lovely. <laughs> all that pepper is going right up my nose. So. You could also do this in a bowl if you were so inclined. Because I have a raised pan and I'm not using a cookie sheet, I'm just doing it straight in the pan. So make sure it's all coated really well. You're gonna have excess and that's fine. Nothing wrong with topping it with extra sauce or having a dipping sauce for your french fries. And there you go, it's now topped. They are now officially buffalo wings, but I'm going to bake them for about 10 more minutes until they're really beautiful, crispy brown color and then I'll plate everything and take a picture and it'll be nice so that's where we're at again if you wanted to add cheese to your fries if you wanted to add chili if you wanted to add um I don't know what else do you put on french fries <laughs> if you wanted to add a topping that needs to be melted now would be the time to add that to your fries don't forget to stir everything every 10 minutes um, make sure you're flipping the fries, flip the cauliflower. That way you can, actually, if you don't flip this, it's not, it's not a terrible curse. Um, I didn't. So, <laughs> but flip your fries now and add the toppings if that's what you're going for. I will see you in about 10 more minutes when it's all done and I'll take a picture to show you when it's plated. Dun, 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 dun. And there we go. Absolutely gorgeous cauliflower wings and fries. Unfortunately, the plate's all one color, but that's okay. I hope you enjoy and happy cooking, everybody.